Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on network cabling and connectors. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to discuss the requirements from CompTIA exam 220-701, section 4.2, where we need to categorize network cables and connectors and their implementations. We're going to go through all kinds of different cables with all of these different abbreviations. So before we're done here, you'll know all about this networking technology and much more. Let's start with cables. Cables are certainly the fundamental aspect of our network communication. If we don't have cables, we're in pretty bad shape. Although these days, you may find that the cables are becoming less and less important. The wireless communication that we have these days is making cables slowly go away, but they're nowhere close to leaving us. We have such advantages at having a cabling infrastructure. There's speed, there's reliability, there is privacy, there's lack of interference. There's a lot of nice things that come with having that physical medium. Whenever you're building out your cabling infrastructure, wherever it is, whether it's in a home office or in a large enterprise, it's an extremely important part of what you're doing. If you don't have good cabling, Nothing else is really going to work over that network. And if you go anywhere, there's still cables everywhere you go. Uh, we're, we're seeing that change now with wireless networks, but still a major part of what everybody is doing in networking today. It takes more to have a good cable than putting some copper inside of a piece of plastic. You need some standards. And fortunately, there are some industries and alliances that have gotten together and have created standards for cabling. One is the Electronic Industries Alliance, the EIA. It's a bunch of trade organizations that got together and said, for our industry, let's create some standards on how to cable some of these things. If you want to read more on that, it's at EIA.org. You may also see cabling standards referred to by a TIA standard standard or the Telecommunications Industry Association. And these standards, market analysis, trade shows, the TIA does a lot of different things. And you'll see, for instance, there is a commercial building telecommunication, telecommunications cabling standard. It is called the ANSI TIA EIA 568. And if you look at any type of cabling technology or cables that you would buy off of the internet or connectors that you might buy, very often they refer to that EIA TIA 568 standard. Some of the most common cabling you'll find for doing networking, for doing voice communication, is twisted pair copper cabling. And it, it gets that name because, as it looks here, the pairs are twisted around each other. Each one of those pairs is balanced. It has a plus and a minus associated with the signals. And so as it's spinning around, it might have a transmit plus and a transmit minus, or a receive plus or receive minus. That's how you'll see us writing it. In reality, it's the signal going through it that is at a different wave. So you'll have those, those sine waves of signal. As one goes up, the other one is going down. And that helps a lot with opposing and making sure that the interference to the signals going through is minimized. The secret here is that twist. So instead of a wire that may be right next to a piece of, of an interference, radio interference, a uh, uh, fluorescent light. Instead, the wire is constantly moving away from that. It's going back and forth closer and farther away from it, which means that when this traffic gets to the other end, one side of the cable, one side of that twist was close to the interference. The other side was not. You can compare the two and put the signal back together again. So the twisted pairs aren't really there for convenience although it certainly helps by keeping everything straight, they're really there to help make sure that the signal on one end is able to get to the other end all in one piece. Another thing you'll notice, and you can almost tell this by this picture right here, notice this blue cable has a very slow twist in it, and the cable right next to it's much faster twist. There are different twist rates between those different cables, cables going through. So that, that also helps because you're going to see different communications go through, different interference to those communications go through, depending on how fast the twist is in the midst, middle of all of those things. And that's going to help also get that signal in one piece to the other side. If you're in an environment, an industrial environment, or one where there is a lot of interference, you may want to consider using something called an STP cable, a shielded twisted pair, which means you do have that twisted pair cable, but there's also shielding on it to just protect against additional interference. Now, because you have that shielding there, you're also going to need to ground this cable. And so you'll see there's extra connectors on the shield to be able to connect the shield to a common ground. Most all networking cable, though, is unshielded. We have got these twists in the cable. We've built the cable in a certain way to hopefully not have to worry so much about interference. There is no metal shielding here. You don't have to worry about a ground. You simply 
put your connector on the end and plug it into your Ethernet connection or whatever network connection you're using. And Unshielded Twisted Pair works, works just fine for the vast majority of network configurations out there. Not all cables are created the same. There are different categories of cables. And we, we in our networking industry have categorized cables to work in a certain way. One of the most common older style was a category three. When we first were putting in 10 megabit ethernet, four megabit token ring, a category three cable was built with specifications that could handle the electrical signals that those particular networks required. Now those were relatively old networks. They're relatively slow networks. And we realized that if we were going to build faster networks and build higher frequency networks, that we needed a cabling that was able to handle those speeds. But we needed to give it a category name so we could say, if you're going to have a faster network like a 100 megabit Ethernet, make sure you have a minimum standard of a category 5 cable. And so you can see that that's where you now can begin, what cable do I want to buy? Generally, a higher category cable is a better type of cable, a higher quality cable, and it costs a little bit more. So people can make a decision. If you're going to put in a slower network, we'll put in CAT3. Uh, we abbreviate it usually as CAT. Uh, category 5 tended to be very much a standard. CAT5 standard, if you look at your cables that you have, written on the side of the cable is going to be some markings. And it will tell you on the side what category you're using. We realized also that we needed to upgrade to 1 gig Ethernet over this copper cabling, that we would need even a tighter specification. We needed something that was a higher frequency. It would be able to handle much higher speeds that we put across it. So this Category 5 Enhance, the E is there to show you that we've added to the Category 5 standard just a little bit. Much of it still is Category 5, but we needed just a little bit more to get it up to the requirements we needed to be able to send 1 gigabit per second Ethernet signals across it. The most common high-end category these days, though, is Category 6. And that'll support 10 gig Ethernet uh, up to a length of 55 meters, which is pretty good in a, in a data center where you tend to have a very high-speed 10 gig technology these days. That works just about where you would need it to be. You don't see a lot of 10 gig quite yet. When we made this video, it's not a broad implementation of a standard. And almost everybody running that 10 gig Ethernet these days is doing it over fiber. But there are some people that want to do it over copper. And so you can do it uh, that 6 over copper. There's a new categorization, a 6A, that is for 100 meters over 10 gig Ethernet there. So a couple of different options when you get up to those speeds. And what you'll find is the category 6 is also backwards compatible with everything else. So the higher the number, the better the type of cable, and the more you'll be able to push across that wire.